Hey guys, so we all know that software development is a lot different than it used to be. You know, I started learning to code around 2007, and aside from the languages themselves, virtually everything has changed from the process to the tooling, but it's changed over what I would say is a couple of decades, uh, not overnight. And I see a lot of people acting like LLMs and recent AI tools have just completely changed and revolutionized everything in the past couple of years. Yes, in 2022, we probably couldn't imagine the code generation that we have from some of these agents. But other than that, the processes are, are not all that different. And I came across this Reddit post of a tweet talking about development three years ago versus now and how much better it is today. So we're talking 2022 compared to 2025. And I wanted to just take a look at this narrative, look at some of these points, with which some I agree with, some I don't, and just offer some insight and yeah, a little bit of criticism uh, of some of the points. And this isn't meant to be like a negative video trashing someone else's opinion. I'm not mentioning names or accounts or anything. This is just for a discussion. And of course, most of this is my opinion and you're welcome to disagree. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so I just wanted to take a second and tell you about today's sponsor. So Savella is an all-in-one solution for hosting your apps, your APIs, static sites, and they support just about any popular language and, and framework that you can think of. And I myself have been doing web development for about 20 years now, and I remember the the absolute nightmare that came with deployment and DevOps up, up until really just a few years ago. But Sabella is a platform that makes it super easy, gives you a simple UI to work with to deploy your applications, as well as spin up databases like Postgres in, in really just a couple of clicks. And you can deploy from GitHub or GitLab or from a Docker image. They offer free static site hosting and then app and database hosting from $5 per month. And then obviously you can scale as needed. And I don't take on sponsors that I don't believe in. Savella has a great service, great product. So check them out and the link's in the description below. All right, so let's take a closer look at some of the points in this tweet. Some I agree with, some I don't. And I do realize the author was probably being somewhat hyperbolic, but I think it's worth examining anyway because a lot of people actually believe this stuff and, and stuff even crazier. So the first one is, right, we were writing every line of code ourselves. So even three years ago, even 10 years ago, developers weren't writing everything from scratch. So if you think about what we had, we had code snippets and templates that we refined over the years, although we did initially write those. Um, Stack Overflow with millions of tested solutions that a lot of people would just copy and paste. GitHub full of open source code to use and reference and learn from package managers where you install libraries and you never even see that code really. Uh, boilerplate generators, you had CLI tools that scaffold entire projects for you. And, and even, uh, you know, autocomplete in your IDEs was pretty intelligent in 2022. So the idea that we were, you know, coding a notepad, manually typing every character like monks copying manuscripts just really isn't uh, that accurate. So, and good developers have always been good at leveraging ex existing solutions. That's literally part of the job. So the next one is spending hours fixing missing semicolons. So I think this one is, is borderline insulting to developers, but in his defense, I think this one was, was really hyperbolic. I hope so. Um, but linters have been around for a long time and even just ESLint and Prettier, which is what a lot of people use today, it's what I use, has been around for much longer than three years. Um, even just VS Code on its own was showing missing semicolons before you save the file. Uh, again, probably being hyperbolic, but if you were genuinely spending hours on semicolons, that wasn't a tooling problem. That was, you know, more of a fundamental misunderstanding of, of your development environment. So searching Stack Overflow for answers. Now, this one I agree with. We obviously did that a lot for years. Um, I do th think it kind of contradicts the first point, depending on what was meant by writing every line of code yourself. But what I really want to mention for this point is just about Stack Overflow in general, because it's framed like it's some, like it was some tedious ordeal and maybe compared to AI it was, but it also had some real value that AI doesn't, in my opinion. So it had vetted answers with upvotes and real community discussion. There was multiple approaches to the same problem by different, you know, multiple people, uh, not just one way. Explanations of why something works, not just copy paste the code. Real developers sharing, 
you know, tested solutions and they would cover edge cases. Of course, some of it was really toxic too and, and was horrible, but there was a lot of value to it. And yes, AI gives you the answer faster, no argument there, but Stack Overflow gave you context, debate, understanding, and there's real value in seeing how other developers think through a problem, not just getting a, a solution spit at you by a machine. So in my opinion, I think Stack Overflow still does have a lot of value. Um, so the next one, deploying, was hope it runs on production. Now, this is probably one of the most misleading narratives in tech right now. It makes for a great tweet, but it completely ignores how professional development actually worked. So we had staging environments, and even when, back when I was building PHP applications in 2008, uh, I always had a staging environment that mirrored production. It wasn't perfect, and, and you did have to configure a lot of stuff manually, but the concept of you know, testing before production wasn't invented by Vercel in 2023. By the mid-2010s, uh, you know, we had Docker containers for consistent environments. So the whole, like, works on my machine problem was already solved for, for most teams. And um, if, if your code worked in staging, it worked in production because they were configured identical. Uh, and, and in 2022, CI/CD pipelines weren't cutting edge. They were standard practice. So, you know, Jenkins, Circle CI, CI, Travis CI, these are tools that were mature and widely adopted. And you literally couldn't deploy if your tests failed. So that, you know, uh, runs on my machine. It, it's mostly like influencer Twitter stuff. Now, if the original tweet had said 1999 or 2005, then yeah, they'd have a point and they'd have a point with pretty much all this stuff. But acting like we were just cowboys pushing code to production and praying in 2022 just wasn't a thing. Uh, that was decades earlier. So let's look at what is what the tweet claims is so much better about development in 2025. So AI writing code for us. Now, AI is amazing. I'm not someone that's going to, you know, trash it at a fundamental level. In fact, quite the opposite. I use it in all my projects in some way, even if it's just for like reference and learning, autocomplete. Um, it's fantastic for boilerplate code and tedious stuff that you've done a million times. However, this one point brings on a whole new set of big problems that we didn't even have three years ago. Uh, the problem, well, there's a few, but one of the biggest is people just vibe coding serious projects, just pasting AI output, not even pasting it, just letting it write it without even looking at it, not even opening the file. And that can just burn your project to the ground before it even gets up and running. I mean, you rack up so much technical debt. And uh, again, this wasn't something we had, a problem we had years ago. Uh, I think AI is a tool and you need to understand how to use that tool properly. So next one, errors get explained before you even Google them. I mean, your IDE was doing this with intelligent error messages. AI does make it more, you know, conversational. Um, and, and that said, I, I will give credit here. AI can really help you understand the specific errors that you're getting in specific contexts. Where in the past, what we would do is look for a similar error on Stack Overflow and you'd have to adapt to your situation. Now you can just paste your exact error, line numbers, file names, all that, and, and get a, a tailored explanation, which I think is great. So docs feel more like conversations than manuals. So I think he's absolutely right with this one. Um, you don't get a static page where you're left scratching your head trying to figure out which, which section applies to you. You can actually have a conversation, ask follow-up questions, and actually learn. And I think that's a real improvement. So, uh, and, but this is important. Not everyone does that. Uh, a lot of people get lazy and don't even try to understand the errors or don't even read them. Just copy them, throw them in the AI, let AI give you the solution and move on. And that's not learning. That's outsourcing your, your thoughts, your thinking. Uh, let's see. So the last one is deploy is usually just a single command. So this has been true for years. Um, if you remember, you know, well, Heroku is still around, but I, I, don't, I haven't used it. But I used to always use Heroku, git push Heroku main. And I was literally doing that in courses years and years ago. Um, even Vercel and Netlify's continuous deployment, it's not new. You know, these were CI CD pipelines were mature long before chat GPT. Uh, if he said 2007, then yeah, dealing with cPanel, FTP, uh, manual server configuration, that was gen genuinely a nightmare. Um, you know, you could do things correctly, but there was a lot of manual labor involved. By 2022, though, one-command deploys were, were already really the standard. 
So I know the original tweet, tweet again was probably hyperbolic. I get it. But my main point is that these AI tools, they are changing software development, just not as drastically as many people think, and definitely not as, as drastic as a lot of influencers want you to believe. Most companies that are, are doing things the right way are using AI in a much more subtle fashion than plopping a, a prompt in, in Lovable or Bolt or something like that. Um, the actual development process is not all that different than it was in 2020 in my opinion. Now, I, I would even argue that the change from 2010 to 2020 was greater than the change from 2020 to now. You know, back in, in, in 2010, I mean, front-end frameworks were barely a thing. You know, mobile-first design wasn't standard. Cloud deployment was, was still um, uh, relatively new for small developers. And the tools that we got in that decade, Docker and, you know, modern frameworks like React and Vue, GitHub Actions, cloud platforms, these were massive shifts in how we actually work. And AI autocomplete and chat interfaces, they are great additions, but their iterative improvements on an already solid foundation. So, I mean, take this with a grain of salt. Again, it was just meant to kind of spark some conversation and thought. I'm not saying AI isn't valuable. It absolutely is. Um, I'm just saying let's keep some perspective about what's actually changed and what was already pretty good. And I think that, to me, the danger that I see uh, is beginners thinking that they don't need to learn fundamentals because AI will handle it or... Um, experienced developers assuming everyone before 2023 was just stumbling around in the dark and, and neither of those are, are true. But uh, I think we're, we're at a good moment for development tools, <laughs> if I'm thinking optimistically. Um, but we were also in a pretty good moment, you know, three years ago. And hopefully we'll be in a better moment three years from now. That's how progress works, gradually with occasional jumps. Um, hopefully. I mean, things could just go to shit. Who knows? But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if, if you agree, disagree, what your, what your thoughts are. And thanks for watching.